Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a really exciting one and one that I get requested in the comments a lot and that is how to get a remote job in cybersecurity. So there's lots of articles out there nowadays about, about remote jobs and being able to work from anywhere. And even with all the buzz around remote jobs, it could still be difficult to find one, especially if you're not looking in the right places. So in today's video, I have a few tips and places to look for where you can find remote jobs. And of course, the most important thing, which is making sure that there are remote jobs that are actually beneficial to your career and utilize your skill set and whatever experience that you have. So the number one thing on this list is connecting with specialized recruiters. So many companies use recruiting agencies to be able to help them find talent. Those agencies basically build out the talent pipeline for companies that are hiring for the actual roles and jobs that you want. But again, since many companies still are looking for employees who want to work in the office or hybrid, so instead you want to connect with specialized recruiters that are recruiting specifically, specifically for remote jobs or for companies that are open to remote jobs. Typically, these may be smaller to medium-sized software companies. For bigger companies, even tech companies, they're typically moving towards a majority hybrid model. So that's definitely something to keep in mind in terms of the types of companies that you're looking to, that you're looking to apply to. So for specialized recruiters that may specifically just be hiring for remote roles you can find them either on linkedin or you can find the actual recruiting agency for the companies that are utilizing these agencies and then be able to have them provide you a list of jobs or potential roles that may that may align with your interests experience and skill set the next thing on this list is of course remote job portals so there's lots of different job boards and job application websites out there a lot of the big name ones typically nowadays have a way for you to toggle remote jobs versus in-person jobs which already is very helpful but of course many of the jobs on those sites may still be primarily in office since a lot of companies since a lot of companies do tend to still want you to come into the office or do a hybrid model but there are specific websites out there that are hiring specifically only for remote jobs and those are the ones that you probably want to pay the most attention to but one thing to note is that because because a job board may be only maybe only posting remote jobs it may potentially not definitely mean that the jobs on that website may have a lower salary just because they know that you're only looking for remote roles and they may post lower salary ranges However, across the US, there are actually statistics out there that show that remote jobs actually pay the same or more than their in-office and hybrid counterparts. So you should not be lowballing yourself just because you want a remote job and you want to work and you want to work from anywhere. That doesn't mean that you have to take a pay cut or that you have to accept a lower job offer just because you don't think that you could get a higher offer from a different company that's also remote. So definitely things to be wary of when you're on the job search. Of course, always fight for the salary that you deserve. That is always going to be one of the most important things down the line. And the next thing is digging into your personal network or referrals. So I'm sure many of you guys watching probably already have a LinkedIn or some kind of professional social profile where you connect with different professionals, your coworkers, your teammates, your colleagues, other recruiters. And then if you're even luckier, you may even have a group of friends who also happen to be in technology or maybe even cybersecurity that may be able to refer you for their company. So whenever you're looking for a new role, you always want to tap into your network and see what roles are out there. Sorry, the lighting is changing right now. So I'm currently not active on LinkedIn, but when I was, I know a lot of my old colleagues colleagues and old teammates were posting links for referrals for different roles that were open in their company as well as people that I went to college with who were also posting referral links or even professors who had connections with companies posting referral links for specific jobs that other companies were hiring for. So it doesn't even have to be that you have to reach out to someone ask for a referral because I know sometimes I can feel a little bit weird. Honestly so many people are looking to hire right now. I know there's definitely turbulent times with the recession and everything going on in the stock market and, and things like that. And while there are companies that are doing layoffs and cutting down their teams, there are still other companies who are looking to grow their team and looking to hire more. And if you're someone who is looking for a new job, specifically remote, this is one of the best avenues to go for, especially because you already have a connection at that company and you're able to learn more about the company culture as well as potential prospects for remote jobs. As long as you let people know that a deal breaker for you is, is not being able to work remotely. And especially nowadays, since that has become so much more normalized maybe 30 to 40 percent of my friends work remotely and and that is a huge number compared to when i graduated college in 2019 and and everyone was expected to work in the office five days a week no questions asked so if you're looking for a new job make sure you consult your network and and reach out to different people especially if someone you know is already working for a company that has remote jobs or they're working remotely all right next thing on this list is is trying freelance or contractor jobs that are already remote to get that remote experience 
So this is something that I hadn't thought of before before I joined my current company. So in my current role, I'm working as a security analyst. This job is fully remote forever compared to my previous job at a financial services company where I was working remotely for the pandemic. And then afterwards, I was expected to go back to the office five days a week, which I was not a huge fan of that policy, especially, especially with the whole company proving that we could work well and very efficiently in the last two years of the pandemic. But of course, there may be different perspectives based on the senior leadership team and, and other guidance that your company may be following. But there may be companies out there who are listing remote jobs, but they may only be looking for people who have already had experience working remotely. This is something that I hadn't thought of before I joined my current company because when I joined, one of my team leads mentioned a good thing that you had experience working remotely because I don't know how to train people to be able to work remotely if they've only worked in an office setting. And that was something I had never thought of before. Of course, many people in tech during the pandemic had to be forced to work remotely. And to be honest, unsurprisingly, a lot of companies who now have fully remote roles are also trying to look for people who have already had experience working remotely. So, so they have some kind of record proof, I guess, of you being able to work efficiently without worrying about you getting disengaged or not connecting with the team, especially when you already had experience doing that at your previous company. It's just a better telltale sign of you being able to succeed in that new role compared to someone who is completely new to working remotely and they may not feel as engaged or they may not connect as well with your coworkers or their teammates or maybe there's someone who didn't realize that they prefer to work in the office you never know and typically a lot of freelance and contractor work especially in tech tends to be more fully remote compared to compared to full-time jobs in tech that may tend to want more hybrid or in-person employees so if you're someone who is able to go for something freelance or something consulting based or something contractor based just to get your foot in the door if you haven't worked any remote jobs in the past then it would be really helpful for you to put that on your resume and then show future full-time employers that you're very much a great option to hire especially for a remote job and who knows the freelance and contractor jobs that you do work remotely may end up hiring you if they see the value and the skill set that you're bringing to the team all right the last thing on this list i wanted to discuss is working for startups or smaller companies. So in the startup space, there are actually a lot of companies who are hiring for remote roles. Of course, not all of them, but as a startup, you may have you may have less budget to allocate to an office setting. And, and nowadays, because it's become so okay to be able to work remote, employees don't expect to want to come into the office all the time. At least most people that I talk to, there are a lot more people who are returning to smaller companies and startups that are in their early to mid stages that are more likely to have remote roles. And what's really interesting is that a lot of these companies actually may have already been remote even before the pandemic. And that is a culture I think is very positive to be able to help you cultivate a good experience while working remote. I'm currently also working at a company that, that was also very remote even before the pandemic. We weren't fully remote, but a big portion of the workforce was remote. And that's something that I think really does play out into the company, into the company culture. If you're a remote first company at heart, it really does show in the way that you share communications, the way that you engage your employees, the events that are created on a regular basis and everything in between. And overall, in my personal opinion, it's been a very, very positive experience and I wouldn't have had it any other way. And especially for later stage startups or small companies. I know when I say the word startup, it sounds very risky and I don't think that it is that way especially when you're especially when it's a growing startup one that already has paying customers one that has a good senior leadership team and one that values its people and employees so these are all just things to consider I'm not I don't mean to bash on larger companies or big tech companies but I do think that it typically tends to be the case that bigger companies prefer to be in the office especially because a lot of the office space that are rented that are rented out to these larger companies have five ten-year contracts and if they already signed the contracts then they probably want people to be in the office to fill in that real estate and because they're already paying for the food vendors the janitors the cleaning the electric and every other bill that goes into keeping up an office space they most likely they most likely also want people to be in there to use it which definitely makes sense from just a cost-based point of view so i definitely don't want to make it sound like i'm just bashing in office work but i do think that people have their own preferences some people like working remotely some like working hybrid and some like working in the office and it really is just up to you to decide what you like and it really is just up to you to decide what you prefer and if a remote role is something that you want then hopefully these tips can help you and if you have any others that you would like to share with the community or on the discord channel linked in the description then please drop it in the comments below and if you like this video please give a 
thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!